Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture on the testing of hypothesis. Today we will discuss about what is the F distribution. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute, India. You can contact me either of my email ID. So what is the F distribution? It is also called as the F ratio, which is widely used in the probability and the statistics are there. This F distribution is uh, stated by R. Fisher and the W. E. Snyders. These are the persons are there. And based on these two persons, we will call this fun this distribution either as the F ratio or also called as the Sindrida F or the Fisher Sindrida distributions are there. And it is a continuous probability distribution and which is widely used in, for example, in ANOVA and many of the other F tests are there. What is the definition of the F distribution are there? So if you have the two chi-square independent variates, X and Y have the chi-square variates with the degree of freedom mu nu1 and the nu2 means X follows the chi-square distribution with the degree of freedom this, Y follows the chi-square distribution with the degree of freedom nu2 and both are my independent, then the F statistics is defined as of here. So X has the degree of freedom nu1, Y has the degree of freedom nu2, that is the ratio of them. In other words, you can say the ratio of the two independent chi-square variate that is x upon y divided by their respective degree of freedom that is nu1 and nu2 and its probability density function is defined like this way. We will see in, in the couple of slides how you can define this one. Once you have the f distribution, you can denote it this as f nu1 and nu2 and if you closely look about this function, what you can observe everywhere is nu1 and nu2 appears. It means what is the first remark for you is the distribution of the S statistics does not involve any of the population parameter and it depends only on the uh, degree of freedoms of the X and the Y. These are the variation of the probability density function with respect to nu1 and nu2. So in this case, the first degree is 1 and the second one is 5. So the graph will look like here. This blue line is for the 510 and this is 100 and 100. Also, you can see when both the values are 1, you can see the graph is look like say, exponential and the others are like here. So what you can observe that as you can see this value is mu1 is 100, mu2 is 100 that is mu1 or mu2 are the large. Then the graph is, is approximately with the normal distribution while for whenever any of the value is 1 then you can say this is the exponentials are there. So what are the some facts about that? you can observe the curve is not symmetric but it is skewed to the right. Why? You can see these are not the symmetric but it is more tail on the right hand side. So whenever there is there is more tail on the right side. So that means the skewed to the right side. Also you can see for the different value of the degree of freedom you have the different curves. The F statistics is always be greater than or equal to 0. What is the meaning of that? F value can never be less than of the 0. And as the degree of the numerator and denominator gets larger, the curve approximate to the normal distribution as I had seen in here. You can see whenever the value of either of the nu1 or nu2 or both are increases or larger, then you can see the graph is approximately with the normal distribution. Now we can say how you can derive the F distribution. What is the PDF of this? As by the definition of this, f is nothing but here, where x and y are the two chi-squares variates with the degree of freedom here. So can you find the value of the x upon y from here? What is the value of the x upon y here? You can easily find the value of this. So where x and y are the two chi-square variates and we all know that whenever there is a two chi-square variates, then the ratio of them which follows to which one? If, if you remember the last lectures are there, it follows the beta distribution of second kind. Yes, true. This is the beta distribution of the second kind. However, x plus y will follow the beta distribution of first kind. So, ratio of them, ratio of the two chi square variables follow the beta distribution of the second kind with the degree of freedom, uh, with the parameters first degree of freedom by 2 and second are there. And you all know what is the beta distribution of second kind is. This is the formula for this. B, B is represent for the beta distribution x raised to power m, this is my m, this is my n. So this is here. Now based on this, so what is the meaning of that? I can substitute the value of the x, replace the value of the x as x upon y or I can replace the value of the x as, I can replace the value of the x as here. When you replace the value of here, 
इट मीन्स न्यू वन अपॉन न्यू टू एफ इज माई ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू जीरो वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दैट एफ इज माई ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू जीरो सो आई कैन सब्सटीट्यूट दी वैल्यू ऑफ दी एक्स हियर आई कैन सब्सटीट्यूट दी वैल्यू ऑफ दी एक्स हियर सो द पी डी एफ इज माई आई कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर सो सिंस दिस इज द आई हैव रिप्लेस द वैल्यू ऑफ दी एक्स टू बी हियर सो आई कैन टेक एज ए डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस नो वट इज द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी एफ सो न्यू वन अपॉन न्यू टू इज टेकन एज ए आउट साइड व्यू नाउ वट इज दैट न्यू वन अपॉन न्यू टू रेज पावर हियर सो आई कैन टेक द पावर ऑफ दिस माइनस वन इज देयर एंड वन पावर इज हेयर सो इट कैन बी रिटर्न एज सिंपली ऑफ दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड दिस इज नोन एज द पी डी एफ ऑफ द एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट्स द वे यू कैन ड्राइव द पी डी एफ ऑफ द एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वंस यू विल ड्राइव द पी डी एफ ऑफ द एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नाउ अवर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड द मेन एंड द वेरियंस ऑफ द एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट इज अवर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड द मेन दैट इज द ई ऑफ एफ वेरियंस इज ई एफ स्केयर माइनस ई एफ होल स्केयर सो हाउ यू कैन फाइंड दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट विद द जनरल वैल्यू ऑफ दिस सो क्लियरली सेज दैट वेन एवर आर इज वन दिस वैल्यू इज नथिंग बट माई ई ऑफ एफ दैट इज अ मी वेन एवर आर इज टू वी कैन ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट द ई एफ स्केयर दैट इज दिस पार्ट एंड देन वी कैन सब्सटीट्यूट हेयर वी विल गेट द एफ वेरियंस नाउ वट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ दिस दिस द कंटिन्यूस सो आई कैन राइट एज ए जीरो टू इन्फिनिटी ऑफ दिस बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट वट इज द एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ दिस This is nothing but x raised to power r of this. So here the function is with respect to the f. So I have written like this way. I can substitute the value of the f at here. You will get this expression. Since the integration is with respect to the f, so this part is constant. This part is constant. It can be taken outside, and this and this is the power can be added like this way. Now how you can solve this integration is I can simply take this value as say y. i can use as a substitution here then what is the value of the df that is new 2 upon here when f is 0 the limit y is 0 that is when f is my 0 what is the meaning of that y is also 0 when f is infinity what is the meaning of that y is also be the infinity so it means limits are remain the same so i can substitute the value of the f i what is the value of the f from here that is new 2 upon new 1 of f so i can substitute here here and the df value this now how you can solve this part b so do you remember that i can write this as a, this part is my constant i can take an as outside and this one i how can i write that you can see this part is my here and this part i can take an as a outside because integration is with respect to y so this part is my here and one part is this that is new 2 upon New one, so you can clearly see that this minus one and this plus one will be cancelled out. Now you can take as a reverse. So what is the value of this? This is r plus here. Now what is that? This is nothing but my minus of this. So this will be cancelled out. So only r is here. Now how you can solve that? You do you think that any of the integration which is of here, this is say y raised to power something upon one plus y raised to power something and here. Yes, this is nothing but the beta distribution of here. Now, if you compare them, you can see m minus one. So this part is my m, and denominator is m plus n. So here r is missing. So if I add the r and minus of the r, there is no problem in that case. Like of this. Now you can see this is my m. This is my n. This is my m. So what is that? This is the integration of the beta function of the m comma n. So this is m. and this is n now you can expand the value of the beta function what is that this is gamma function of the m gamma function of the n divided by sum so we can expand the both the expressions are here what is that this will be cancel out and what is the remaining part is here this is the value of the e of f r provided because we all knows that beta function beta function of the m comma n is valid only when m is greater than 0 n is greater than 0 so it means this value must be positive this value must be positive so this is must be positive and this holds so therefore we can compute e of fr that is e of fr is nothing but here now we can substitute the value of r is 1 and r is 2 once you substitute r is 1 so this value is my 1 this is my 1 this is my 1 here and this value is here so i can try to solve this how you can open this all of you know that what is the gamma function of the n i can written as gamma function of of like this way 
n minus 1 gamma function of the n minus 1. So I can expand this part. I can expand this part because it is already a less than of this. So I can write this expression as of this by using this expression and I can write this part as of here. Now what you can see that this will be cancelled out, this will be cancelled out, so the remaining part is my here. You can see if you take the LCM, this value will be cancelled out, this 2 will be cancelled out after taking the LCM, you will get here. Why this happened? Because in this case r is my 1, so nu2 is greater than of 2. Similarly for here, I can again expand this part, I can expand this part, we will get this expression. So you can see again this value will be cancelled out, this value will, will, will cancel out, you will get this expression. Or you can take the LCM, you will get this simplified form. And here mu2 is r is my 2, so it's my 4. Once you will get the EF2, EF square and EF, we can substitute the value of this. So the mean is nothing but my, this is my mean. So the mean is mu2 upon here. And this part is my here. So after the simplification, you will get the variance as of here. And if you closely look about the mean, you can see this is nothing but independent of mu1. That is independent of the degree of freedom of the numerator. That's the most important remark for you. And similarly for here, it is dependent on the both side. So this is the way you can compute the F distribution and its mean and variance. We will see some more properties of the F distribution in our next class. Till then, you can simply follow this link for finding the various videos. Best of luck students. Happy learning.